NCAA Softball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. Drama in Gainesville. Florida is the seeded team, but their season on the line, a must win game. Game two of this Super Regional between Florida and Georgia. What a rivalry. Georgia looked good in every aspect of their game yesterday. They were on point. Jaden Fields led off the third inning with a solo home run. Mary Wilson Avant controlled these Florida hitters in the circle. Nine strikeouts for her. And Georgia won game one of the series four to nothing. A win for the Bulldogs, and they are moving on to their fifth Women's College World Series. Winner of our series gets either Texas or Oklahoma State. Welcome back to Gainesville. Courtney Lau alongside three-time All-American and national champion Kayla Bro. And hey, if you're a Florida fan, there is good news. They have not lost back-to-back -back games this year. They can make adjustments. Florida is so good at that. They take care of business so well. They are a team that relies on quality pitching and good defense. They just need some of their offense to come through. Coach Wong switching up the lineup a little bit, trying to make some things happen, putting Charlotte Eggles in the three spot, but more importantly, Kendall Lindemann hitting number two today for the Gators. Yeah, Kendall Lindemann was the only one that had success, really. She was two for three yesterday. They only had three hits. Take a look at the series, though. Very similar to what we saw in the regular season between these two. It's important to note, Florida outscored Georgia in games two and three, 27 to six. This game's all about adjustments, and Florida's absolutely going to have to make those adjustments because Georgia is so tough to beat because of their offense ability. Yeah, Georgia is dangerous when they step into the box. Eight of their 26 runs in the tournament so far via the long ball. You know what's great about Georgia is they don't rely on one person to get the job done. They can rely on their whole team, one through nine. They all have home run power, which is why you see Jaden Fields getting the start yesterday, coming up with a huge home run. And then Peyton Bordeaux, the freshman in the eighth spot, getting the job done in the top half of the seven, but it was really the bottom half of the lineup. We talked about they don't rely on one superstar. They use their whole lineup. The seven, eight, and nine hitters dominated in yesterday's game, and they're the reason why Georgia got the W in game one. Yeah, they were six for eight yesterday. Georgia, history leans towards the Bulldogs. If you win game one, it shows 81% of the time you move on to the World Series. The NCAA Softball Super Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Wilson Avant back in the circle for the second straight day. Yeah, she's their ace. She's the go-to pitcher. She's the one that's going to potentially take them to the Women's College World Series. She throws in the mid to high 60s, but really it's her diversity of pitches. She's got a great variety. She can hit all quadrants of the zone. Beautiful drop ball right here. She can hit the inside pitch, go to both sides of the plate, and then she can throw that chase pitch, a rise ball up in the zone, trying to keep Florida Gators off balance and off time all day long. She had a lot of success against this Florida lineup. How will she fare second day in a row? Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Gators, brought to you by Capital One. And as you mentioned, Kendall Lindemann moving up. She was two for three yesterday. I think this is a good strategy for the Gators to try and put her in between Hannah Adams and Charlotte Eckel. Eccles because she got on base, but she came up with a couple big time hits, two doubles in game one. So Hannah Adams will lead off. Yesterday went 0 for 2 with a walk. Mary Wilson Avant just had the number of almost every hitter. Five different players struck out yesterday. Shot to Kuma at second, one away. And I know that goes down in the books as an out, but that's a loud out. That's a quality piece of hitting right there by Hannah Adams. And it's really the best piece of hitting that we saw from her going back to yesterday's ball game. Yeah, there weren't a lot of outs like that yesterday from anyone. Kendall Lindemann was fantastic, had two doubles. They both went right down the third baseline. Yeah, and Avant challenged her on the inside corner, and she jumped all over those pitches. And she did well managing that rise ball a little bit up in the zone. She elevated her barrel angle to get there and laced a couple shots into the gap. Yeah, Lindemann two for three yesterday. The rest of Florida one for 21. 
And Lindemann is that experienced player. She's a three-time All-American, of course, started out her career at Minnesota. She has talked to this team about being in this moment and being ready for that pitch when it comes your way. Well, she's one of those players that has such a good mentality at the plate. She learns constantly. She's constantly viewing the spin of the pitch, looking for her plan, looking for the approach of the pitcher, and trying to make the best decision that she can to jump on a pitch that she can crush. Because she can crush. Let's not forget that she's one of the best home run hitters in the game right now. Her numbers are down this season, but she can hit the ball out of the park anytime. Yeah, eight homers on the year. It's down for her, but she still has that pop in her bat. We saw it yesterday as it fired down the, to third. Seventy career home runs. That's tied for fourth most among active players right now for Lindemann. She's got a full count. She's got a hit. Kendall Lindemann rushing to second. How about three doubles in this series for Kendall Lindemann? Lindemann has just been on fire. She works Avant deep in the count and then gets something that she can hit. Look at this. This is a beautiful pitch. It's over the middle. It's a mistake by Avant. It's trying to be a drop ball, but doesn't have that same bite. Kendall Lindemann is on time and just pops this thing into the gap to pick up a runner in scoring position early in the game for the Gators. So this will be interesting because when Lindemann had those two doubles yesterday, she had Julia Cottrell batting behind her, and she was left in scoring position. Now it's Sharla Eccles in the three spot behind Lindemann. And this is exactly why Coach Tim Walton made this move. It's to give Sharla an opportunity with somebody with a hot bat to get on in front of her. Eccles had zero opportunities in game one with runners on base. Eccles high into the air. It'll be scooped up by Sydney Chambly, and Lindemann will stay at second. Two down. Gators now 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position in this Super Regional. Julia Cottrell steps up, does not have a hit off of Georgia. Balls go to Julia Cottrell, the sophomore out of Wichita, Kansas. And that hits her foot. Mary Wilson Avant did not hit a batter yesterday. It was one of the things that made her so successful in game one was her ability to limit the free passes. She only had two walks on the day, no hit by pitches. And we know this Gator team, they like to crowd the plate, they like to wear it, and they'll take the free pass in any opportunity they get. So she's gonna really have to clean that up because this is a Gators offense also that understands the advantages of taking that free pass. And if you give them an inch, they'll take the mile. So you have to really be sharp and not give them anything. Rachel Fico in the circle right now, talking to the Georgia infield. So Tim Walton gathers his two runners on. Remember the adjustments that Florida made in game three, the second time in the regular season, they saw Mary Wilson Avant. Look at the difference. Only one hit in the first one, seven hits, but the free passes, wow. It makes a huge difference. And this is a Georgia, Georgia, excuse me, a Florida offense that drops off after the top three batters in the lineup pretty significantly. So if you allow them to get a 
couple free bases, it's going to mean a lot to them. Because despite, despite the fact that they don't have as high of averages as a normal Florida team does, what they do do really well is they take the free passes. They have a good strikeout to walk ratio. They have good on base percentages despite their batting averages being a little bit lower. Yeah, but as a team, Florida hits 279. This is Bailey Goddard up, the number five hitter, the right fielder. has one hit in the tournament. She's one for six, and of course, including last weekend's regional. 2-2. Two -two. Money shot for Mary Wilson Avant to get her first strikeout of the day with two on. Mary Wilson Avant in a little bit of a jam, says no big deal. Challenges on the inside corner, picks up strike three. Circle, well, she threw a no hitter against USF on Sunday. Yeah, the good news for the Gators is she's playing her best softball right now. She likes to throw heavy on her arm side, so she's going to work screwball inside to righty. She's got a rise ball, a changeup, and she can throw those at different speeds. And you can see right here, her changeup is beautiful. Good deceptive spin, 56 miles an hour. You're going to see it very, look very similar out of the hand compared to some of her other pitches. And then her screw, this is her signature pitch. You can see it's going to cross the strike zone pounded for a strike, but then it breaks about four or five more inches to induce a lot of swing and misses and specifically really challenge the right-handed batters in this Georgia lineup. Yeah, so Georgia hasn't seen her much in person as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Dogs brought to you by Capital One. Jaden Fields was the one that got things started, had a solo shot in the third. It was Natalie Lugo starting yesterday in the circle. You know, sometimes as a coach, you just get a feeling because Jane Fields did not start in any games of the regional tournament. They put her in. She goes three for three with a home run. Not a bad choice by Coach Lou Harris Jamper. She looked pretty solid. Savannah Sy Sykes playing third will lead off. And these Georgia hitters are going to see a different high tower than they saw in the regular season. She's changed. Yeah, and I think what's going to be more effective is her speed change. And her ability, again, like we said, to go inside, to trust her arm side pitches, that screwball with a lot of great movement. But really beyond that, changing up the speed and then the placement of her pitches are what makes her so good. Jam Sykes, Cottrell hustling to the net. Florida's got an energy about them today. I mean, even just the hustle play. Oh, yeah. They had to have gone back to the locker room last night after the loss, probably felt some frustration, probably regrouped, and they got to know that they have to bring something different today. And we saw that a little bit with the start offensively. It didn't produce a run, but they did get a little bit more action than they did in game one. And that pitch hit Savannah Sykes. So the leadoff is aboard thanks to the walk. Thank you. Now this is Hightower trying to bust in the inside corner and trying to hit Sykes right under the hands. You can see just gets a little bit too far of a run inside and clips Sykes and her arm guard on her front left arm. Up next, Sini Kuma. <laughs> Kuma 0 for 3 yesterday. She's 4 of 11 in the tournament with 3 RBI, 3 walks.
That one gets away from Cottrell. Sykes bumps to second. So Georgia has a runner in scoring position. Not a great start for Hightower with the hit by pitch. And then that one getting away from Cottrell. You're just putting an opportunity on the table for Georgia early in this game. And what makes that so dangerous is Georgia is a team that thrives on momentum. They thrive on energy. They have been up and down this season, but that's because they're a young team that's inexperienced. But the one thing that they're not up and down on is the energy and enthusiasm they bring every single day. And that's tough to kill if you're an opposing team. Yeah, we talked to associate head coach Tony Baldwin, and he told us, yeah, it's a young group, but they've been resilient, and they've brought that attitude where they love to get out there and play. They want to play every day, and they're playing some of their best softball right now in this tournament. Absolutely, and every single person that we talk to on this Georgia team, whether it's the players or the coaches, just says that they're a different team even in the last three weeks. Sydney Kuma. Bounces off the fence. Thanks to Kuma, it's two in scoring position for the dogs. Georgia Bats making a statement coming out. A little screwball that doesn't break enough inside for Hightower. Kuma is all over it. Gets her barrel inside, releases this thing down the line. And it's hit so hard. But you know what? This is the problem. Sykes, you cannot go back and tag on that play. Get off. Because if she doesn't catch it, which is the case here, you score a run potentially. You have to get off and read that play, especially early in the ball game. I think that's a missed opportunity right there for Georgia. So Sykes goes back to third with Kuma on second. Kuma's double, the first hit for one through six in this Georgia lineup in the Super. Yeah, and it's a good sign for Georgia if the top of their lineup is coming through because despite the fact that they won yesterday, the top of the lineup was O for all of their at-bats. They had no luck against Lugo, and it came down to the bottom stepping up and getting the job done. But again, that's a typical Georgia team. They are not, they don't have one superstar on this team that just crushes all the time. They're inconsistent, but that makes people have to step up in certain games. Now the first six hitters in this Georgia lineup went 0 for 17 yesterday. Lacey Fincher, obviously part of that, as she bats third. She did crush a couple of home runs in the regional against Western Kentucky. She is their home run leader at 15 on the season. Hightower ahead, 0-2. Oh, did not go. <laughs> this is a beautiful location for Hightower. You're up 0-2 against Lacey Fincher, and you go with the down pitch. <laughs> It's about as close as it gets. Yeah. Will it drop fair? It does. Sykes scores. And Kuma slides safely into third. Lacey Fincher swinging the bat for the dogs. Lacey Fincher is the veteran on this team. All she needed to do was hit something to the outfield. It would have been a sack fly, but this one ends up falling, and she picks up an RBI and a base hit. Georgia getting things off right offensively. They have been so electric. They've been ready to play, and the top of their lineup is showing that yesterday wasn't a fluke, that they come here to, meet, to mean business. And then you have a clutch hitter coming up in Sarah Mosley. There have been so many times this season that she has stepped up to the plate when the dogs needed it most, including a three-run home run to beat Kentucky after they trailed by seven. Yeah, Mosley is a firecracker in the box. She thrives on these big moments. And, you know, the great news is you already have a run on the board if you're Georgia. You can keep it simple. Just hit the ball to the outfield, and you're going to get another run across. And remember, Georgia has no outs. Runners on the corners right now.
strikeout, Elizabeth Hightower. This is a really good recovery performance by Hightower. After you give up a run, you go with the upstairs chase pitch. And this is all because she gets ahead in the count, gets right up there at the eyes of Sarah Mosley, who has absolutely no chance to hit that ball. It's a big time resilient pitch right there. First pitch strike comes in to Jada Kearney, who looks for her first hit against Florida 0 for 3 yesterday. Hightower's feeling it. She's ahead 0-2. And, and despite the fact that she got off to a little bit of a slow start, you can tell she's trying to find that focus, that next level. Because if she doesn't bring her game up, George is going to take advantage. Oh, nasty. Freezer up Hightower. Look at this beautiful changeup. Jada Kearney can't do anything with this pitch. Doesn't expect it with two strikes and ends up walking her way back to the dugout. for Chambly. Hightower has zoned in pretty quickly. Yeah, she had a little bit of a wake-up call to the first few batters of this game, giving up a free pass, which would eventually lead to a run. She's got to lock it down if she wants to give the Gators a chance to push a game three. Chambly's one of those players that has helped bring that mentality to Georgia. She has come in with a positive attitude every day and ready to go to work. Not getting that past Hannah Adams. But Georgia's got a run on the board. presented by Capital One. Man, we've had some amazing softball. FSU, the first team to go back to the Women's College World Series. Elizabeth Mason had a huge home run to tie it in the eighth. Kirsten Landers walked it off with an RBI single in the ninth. Megan Faramo looked solid for UCLA, only gave up a hit, struck out 11 in a must-win game for the Bruins. We'll see them in action again today. And then how about these Georgia Bulldogs shutting out Florida lower seeded teams are six and four so far in this year's tournament. Everybody's got to be on upset alert. You got to be ready to play. There's so much at stake. You have an opportunity to go to the World Series. You got to be ready to play. Yeah, Georgia, if they win today, they are moving on. It would be the fifth Women's College World Series, the first since 2018 for the Georgia Bulldogs. Mary Wilson Avant has been their stud in the circle all season, but these Florida hitters looked a little bit different in the first inning against her today. You can see them make some subtle adjustments. Had some better at bats, more quality at bats against Avant early in this ball game, but they got a long way to go. And really the bottom of the lineup hasn't proved that they can make the adjustment yet. And they're gonna be a big piece if Florida wants to be successful today. The number six hitter is Jordan Matthews in the DP spot today. The first time that she is getting a start in this tournament, made three appearances so far, 0 for 3 as a pinch hitter. Yeah, things worked out for the Gators, moving Kendall Lindemann up in the lineup. She had a double in the two spot. Julia Cottrell was hit by a pitch. That put two on, but... Avant got a big strikeout of Bailey Goddard to get out of the first. I think this is where you're going to see the strength of Mary Wilson Avant. Is she's so 
controlled and composed in the circle that she's not going to let giving up a few runs get to her, giving up a few hits for that matter get to her. She just has a very, very strong mentality, one that she's been working on for her entire career. Sykes grabs it for the first out. And after talking with Coach Baldwin, she's really the key factor in Georgia's success this year. The fact that she came back, she used that extra year of eligibility from the COVID pandemic year to come back and lead this Georgia team is why they're able to play in Super Regionals this weekend. And it's her leadership in the bullpen that's given them an opportunity to compete in the postseason. <laughs> Jamie Hoover steps in now. Remember, Mary Wilson Avan is the one that she has a win over Oklahoma this year. Hello. She has a win over Florida. Now two wins over Florida. Now it is very clear that when she's on, she can beat any team in the country. And the other thing that you're going to see from Avan, if she does give up a couple runs, if she does give up a couple hits, I wouldn't be shocked to see if Georgia leaves her in. In game three against Georgia, or excuse me, against Florida earlier this season, she gave up eight runs and they kept her in the whole ball game. She's their best chance. She's their ace. They're going to ride her until her arm falls off. And she only threw 103 pitches yesterday. So she's healthy. She's got a lot left in the tank to be ready to throw today. But this is the only fourth time this season that she has thrown on back-to-back -back days. We saw her do that in the Alabama series and also last weekend in the regional. Two, two coming to Hoover. Dead. Jamie Hoover is on. Hoover does a nice job right here with two strikes. Evan's going to throw a little screwball in the inside corner that jams up. Hoover, however, she does a good job of just getting enough of this ball and staying through this ball enough to find a patch of grass in the outfield to pick up a base hit for the Gators. Second hit of the afternoon for Florida. Remember, they only had three hits off of Avant yesterday. Brings us to the number eight hitter, Sarah Longley. Takes the first one. Chambly running forward. Hoover stays at first. Cheyenne Lindsay is one of two players that got a hit off of Avant yesterday. And Cheyenne Lindsay's going to be a true triple threat. She can slap, she can bunt, she can hit away. She's got a little bit of power there, but she's a dynamic player, and she's going to have to use her speed to make something happen here against Avant. Now, Coach Tim Walton's really been working with her to get that feel at the plate. When's the right time to lay down that bunt? When's the, de the decision making so it's not so much of an effort? And she's been hitting a lot more lately. And Coach Walton, as well as Cheyenne Lindsay, recognized her power potential, how aggressive her swing is, how fast her bat is. And she can make a lot happen. Has a deceptive amount of pop when she swings away. She's on a four-game hit streak, including one for two yesterday. Leads the team in the tournament, batting 462. Hoover going into scoring position. You know, the defensive alignment, Georgia was ready for this, but it doesn't matter. Hoover does a good job of picking up the stolen base and pushing herself into scoring position. And it's a nice throw by Peyton Bordeaux, but just a little bit late. 
Warner looking for a big hit with two outs right here. Seven for seven on the base paths is Hoover. Cheyenne Lindsay. Oh, Sydney Chambly came over just in time to hit the gas and make the grab. Georgia up by one. Make history. We're making history on the TV side. The first time we will have a softball game on ABC. We could not be more excited. Today at 3 Eastern, Oklahoma, Washington, game two of the series. It was Oklahoma getting the win yesterday, four to two. That was a tie to season low, just four runs for Oklahoma. Jocelyn Allo did have a home run off of Gabby Plain, but they can light it up and there's so many records to the Sooners name right now. Honestly, in the last 10 years, I can't think of an offense that's more fun to watch from a power perspective. I mean, one through nine, they can do so much damage. They have beautiful swings. They have great approaches at the plate, which makes them so dangerous. It's going to be a tough task for Gabby Plain and the Huskies to try and sneak a win in to push a game three in this series. Yeah, and it's not just the upperclassmen. They've got two freshmen that are finalists for the National Freshman of the Year. Jada Coleman has reached base every game. She is fun to watch. <laughs> Again, you look for players that are so fun to watch in that game. Uh, Jada Coleman for sure is one of them. T.R.A. Jennings, the other outstanding freshman, a great one to watch. Jaden Fields right at the fence. Are you kidding me? Jaden Fields, get out of here. A solo shot yesterday, a solo shot today. Keep her in the lineup. I mean, speaking of fun to watch, Jaden Fields, have yourself a weekend. And she laced a changeup in yesterday's game out of the park. Get something different today. Screwball inside, ready for it. Jumps all over it and just moonshots this one out of the park. She's got a deceptive pop. I'm not going to lie to you, Courtney. I'm sitting watching that ball, and I don't know if that's going to be a fly out to left, but it just kept carrying and carrying. That just shows the power and the beautiful extension of her swing that lets that ball and allows that ball to continue to carry. Now you see the wind blowing out, too. She hit that one to left, the flag in center field. Look, this is a player, as Peyton Bordeaux steps in, whose last hit before the postseason was in that Oklahoma game. Came in, a little, a little bit of a slump, has crushed it in the NCAA tournament now. Five of six with two home runs. So beautiful about the postseason. You kind of get a fresh start. It's a, a new leaf turnover. You're playing at a different style or excuse me, at a different level than you did in the regular season. So it's an opportunity to, to if I'm not hitting really well, guess what, does it matter? I can come to play and show up when my team needs it most. And Jaden Fields is a perfect example of that. I mean, going back to this home run, you can hear it, she crushes it. And once again, you felt like in both games with Jaden Fields, she's gone up with a plan. First game, she sets the change up. Second game, you know Hightower is going to throw you inside at some point. That's what she does all day long. So when you do get an inside pitch that's on the corner of the plate that you're looking for and you're ready for it, that shows me that you did a great job preparing and then executing on your plan. Look, she has played at a high level her entire career. Jaden Fields, just a redshirt sophomore, but she played travel ball with the Georgia Impact, and one of her teammates was Sharla Eccles, who plays for Florida. They were the 2018 national champions, so she's used to the pressure. You gotta love a player or players that have experience high level before they get to college. They know what it's like to compete at an elite level to play for national championships. And that matters. And also when you're playing on the best team in the country, you're also facing the best pitchers in the country that you're inevitably gonna see down the line in college. Yeah, Jaden Fields has four hits in this super. Florida has five. <laughs> <laughs>
back-to-back -back strikeouts for Hightower. Early in this ballgame, Hightower's most successful pitch, without a doubt so far, has been her changeup. You can see right there the discrepancy of runs from regionals to super regionals. This Georgia team is tough. And that's what's tough about facing a familiar oppo opponent. This is the fifth time that these teams are going to play each other this season. They're comfortable seeing the opposing team in the uniform across the way. There's no mystery anymore. You know what you're going to get when you play Florida. And they're ready for them. Top of the order with Savannah Sykes, who walked to start the game. Georgia got an RBI single from Lacey Fincher in the first. And then this inning started with a leadoff home run from Jaden Fields. Second time it's gone three balls for Elizabeth Hightower. Three and one here to Savannah Sykes. And she'll put her on with the free pass for the second time. This is a nice job by Savannah Sykes to be able to see and understand that that screwball is going to keep breaking in. So when it looks like it's coming in a strike right on the corner, it's actually going to keep peeling and be about one to two inches off of the plate inside. So good quality takes learning from her first at bat. Kuma saw Hightower really well the first time, had a double out to left. That was just her fourth double of the season back in the first inning. Is one of those scrappy players too. Tony Baldwin told us the first time he saw her, he got a call. He was out recruiting and she was playing on a side field. He went over and she had hit the longest foul ball home run he ever saw. And then in later in the game, she walked and stole two bases. Maybe it was something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the beginning of the year when we talked to associate head coach Tony Baldwin, he mentioned Kuma and said that he thinks that she's one of the most underrated players in this conference in the, in the SEC. And now that she's approaching the end of this season, it's a completely different story. She's not underrated at all. People know about her. You know what to expect. 14 home runs, got some pop in her bat. And she's made huge improvements at the second base position as well as the season continues to go on because that's one of the biggest struggles for Georgia this season has been their defense. And now all these young players like Kuma, like Amistad are learning and growing. And again, it's all about playing your best softball at the end. And it feels and looks like Georgia is playing their absolute best right here, right now. Hoover running back for out number three. We got another long ball from Georgia. Jane Fields having a weekend. Screwball, see ya. To the last time that Georgia went to the Women's College World Series facing Tennessee and Courtney Emanuel smokes this one off of Kaylin Arnold. That's just her third career home run in the eighth inning. It gave Georgia their fourth Women's College World Series appearance. Mary Wilson Avant in the circle, of course, for the dogs. Then they went on their opening game in that World Series. That would be against Florida. Georgia is looking to get to Oklahoma City for the fifth time. Jaden Fields has certainly helped them so far with her bat, four for four in the Super Regional. I mean, I look at that and it's very obvious and clear to me why Mary Wilson Avant's having success here on this stage right now. It's because she's been there before. She knows what it's like to play an SEC opponent in Super Regionals, win a tight ball game, and try and punch a ticket. 
And she won that game two to one. It's a close ball game. She's ready to go. Well, that mindset, that tough mentality for Mary Wilson Avan, that comes from her high school coach. She played high school with her Stratford in Macon, Georgia, and Jeff Treadway, who of course played for the Atlanta Braves, played second base, was her high school coach, and he taught her just to attack hitters, and that really sealed in that mentality. And that's a huge mentality for pitchers to have, is to go up there with your best stuff, with your best pitches and movement, and say, I'm not gonna try and paint around the corners, or I'm not gonna try and hit around, pitch around a hitter. I'm gonna go and throw her my best stuff. And if she hits me, tip your cap. But I'm gonna go with my best and pound the strike zone. Full count now to Hannah Adams. We talk so much about Mary Wilson Avian, but her defense was solid. No errors. That has been a problem for Georgia. I mean, all of the pieces came together yesterday. It really is. It really did. And you look as a team for games like that where you have everything rolling for you. You're pitching, you're hitting, and your defense. And couldn't have asked for anything better from Georgia in game one. Inside by Hannah Adams. This is straight filth right here. <laughs> I mean, change up inside corner, freezes up Adams. She's disappointed because she wants that to be ball four. A little bit inside, but umpire gives it to Avant. At nine strikeouts yesterday for Mary Wilson. I think maybe one of those was looking yesterday. They were all swinging and both today <laughs> looking. And it's a really good sign for Mary Wilson Avent that that changeup is on point. That was a, d a deciding factor in the earlier series that they played this season as well, was the changeup wasn't working as well in game three against the Gators. Kendall Lindemann is dangerous against her, grounds it to Savannah Sykes. That's a big out because Lindemann has been the most successful hitter for Florida this weekend. Charla Eccles, it would be huge if they could get her going. Tim Walton has said oh, she has been such a key piece, such a tough at bat. She's only struck out three times this season. It's been impressive for me too is to hear about her growth and development from a leadership perspective. She comes in, she transfers from Michigan State and then cements herself not only in this lineup, but as a key player and as a key leader for this Gators team. Yeah, already a team captain. Lacey Fincher makes the play. Georgia faces three and sits them all down. Party that every player wants to be at. It's gonna be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. We are punching tickets today to Oklahoma City. Florida State already in. Who's going to join them there? There'll be seven of the other teams that make their way to the Women's College World Series. If Georgia wins here, they are moving on. Florida's got to win today and tomorrow. Winner of our series gets either Texas or Oklahoma State. Um, the Cowgirls looked pretty good. They beat Texas 6-1 to one yesterday. Four home runs in that game. This is such an exciting time of year. This is what you dream of from the time you're a little kid to the time that you're in college is to try and have the opportunity to punch your ticket to Oklahoma City. And dreams are gonna be made today and you're gonna see some of the most incredible performances because of it. And the best example I see that is last night, Florida State goes and upsets LSU on the road. Just magic moments to push your way 
to fight for a national championship. And that one took nine innings. Do you talk about drama at the end of that game? It was awesome. Don't forget, coming up after our game, we've got Kentucky and Alabama, a must-win game for Kentucky. And then later today at 3 on ABC, Oklahoma, Washington. Lacey Fincher to lead off this third inning. These hitters have made Elizabeth Hightower work. She came into this inning having thrown more pitches in two innings than Mary Wilson Avan has thrown in three innings. Georgia certainly hasn't come out and been timid at all. <laughs> no, and you mentioned the pitch count, and the first thing I think of is that Georgia's doing a really good job of fouling off a lot of pitches, making high tower work, being patient when they get something out of the zone, but then trying to foul off pitches that are close. Ooh, and that one hit Fincher hard. She dropped down and put her hand on her hip. And it's interesting because on the field, the umpire just called Fincher out, thinking that she swung and missed, and the ball hit her directly in the body. But actually, she foul tipped it into herself. And so Coach Lou Harris Chambers asking those umpires to meet and talk about this and have some communication. And they're going to go to foul ball. Yeah, this is a screw ball just biting in. Fincher fights it off barely off of the handle of the bat and just nails herself right in the hip. Yeah, and that would be hard for Chris Neighbors to see. He's behind her, and her body blocked it as she turned. So he's behind the plate today, called everybody in to make the right call. But she will sit down on the strikeout. Hightower comes back anyway. This is something that Fincher's not expecting. It's a little drop ball, something that we don't see very often from Hightower. It goes with a pitch that moves down in the zone. And again, she's just frozen because of the pitches she threw before, so tight in on the hands of Lacey Fincher. Sarah Mosley will foul off the first pitch. She struck out in the first inning. That was the first strikeout by Elizabeth Hightower today. Mosley. And that's a beautiful pitch right there. And that's where Hightower's got to be successful and find success is trying to go in and at the hands of these right-handers for Georgia using the spin that not only moves east and west, but has that bite upwards as well. Two strikes to Sarah Mosley, who has worked hard in this A-B. Georgia has a hit in every inning today. Sixth strike out for Hightower. Hightower goes back to that tough pitch on the inside corner. Once again, you can see the spin and the rotation. She gets under this ball, so it's got upwards movement. It's got a ton of bite that just keeps 
climbing and climbing that induces the big swing and miss from Mosley. Hightower has a strikeout looking and swinging in this inning. She's taking care of the first two Georgia hitters. Brings us to Jada Kearney in the five spot. Hightower was so good in the regionals. Came in to this game having pitched 17 and a third straight scoreless innings. Georgia's gotten a single that scored a run, and then of course the home run off of Hightower to put two runs on the board. Centimeter of this ball gets everything. And just when you think Hightower starting to get on a roll, boom, it takes one swing from the Georgia Bulldogs to take back that momentum, and it's gonna cause Tim Walton to go to the bullpen. Savage chain around the neck of Jada Kearney for that home run, her sixth home run of the season. And in the circle, we are gonna have a pitching change as Elizabeth Hightower has been pulled. New face in the circle, we'll introduce you to Katie Cronister when we come back to Gainesville. We've seen her once so far in this tournament. That was back in regionals. And she's going to look completely different from Elizabeth Hightower. First and foremost, she's coming from the left side. She really works down in the zone. She's got good bite, good movement that's going to tail away from lefty batters and down from lefty batters. And she comes in in this reliever role very often. This is where she's comfortable. This is where she does her best. Elizabeth Hightower was pulled after giving up her second solo home run of the day to Jada Kearney. Brings us to Sydney Chambly. And this is the right opportunity. Not only did Hightower just give up that last home run, but you give an opportunity for Cronister to come in and get that lefty-lefty matchup, which is where she thrives. And she'll start with a strikeout to get out of the inning. We will talk to Georgia head coach Lou Harris Champer when we come back. Another home run on the board for her dogs. Jada Kearney continues the big swings for Georgia. 3-0 dogs. The softball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. We are joined now by Georgia head coach Lou Harris Champer and coach Jaden Fields has been crushing the softball the last two days. What's changed for her to give her that confidence at the plate? Yeah, you know, Coach Tony has been working really hard with the hitters. Uh, you can just tell she's letting the ball get in. She's got a really good plan at the plate and she's trusting her plan. I think that's a big deal. Coach Mary Wilson Avant, your senior leader, is pitching lights out with an opportunity to punch her ticket to Oklahoma City. What makes her thrive in these big moments? You know, she's all heart. You know, she's a kid that, you know, you want your own kids to emulate. She's just, a, she's out there for the team. She's going to give it her all. She's going to fight for 21 outs, and that's what we need. Awesome, Coach. Thank you so much. All right, y'all have a good one. Thank you. Yeah, you've seen that fight. I mean, it's been so evident to watch her. We've watched her several times this season, and it's been there. And you know what else is very clear is from the start of the season till now, her demeanor hasn't changed. She doesn't get rattled. She doesn't let the emotion or the moment get too big for her. She stays consistent, and that's exactly what you would hope to see out of a fifth-year senior with tons of experience. And again, she's played the World Series. She's played in Super Regionals before. She knows what it's like to put the team on her back and say, hey, I'm leading us, let's go. Mary wilson Avan only given up two hits to Florida today. They have as many hits as Georgia has home runs today. Julia Cottrell will lead things off here in the fourth. She was hit by a pitch in the first inning, does not have a hit in the series. It's been interesting to watch these two programs battle. Obviously, there's a rivalry there between Florida and Georgia. It was Florida taking the regular season series two games to one. Georgia won that opening game against the Gators. But in the postseason, well, 
Georgia leads the all-time series. After that win yesterday, they are 4-1 and one against Florida in the postseason. I mean, when you look at those numbers, it's crazy to think that Georgia's been the team in the postseason that steps up against a, a tough Gator opponent because year in and year out, the Gators are in the top eight of the rankings and in the seedings. So just to know that Georgia comes in typically and most likely as the underdog and gets the job done against the Gators time and time again in the postseason is a credit to their resiliency and their gutsiness and obviously to Coach Lou harris Champer for leading the way and getting them there. Keep in mind, too, this is a Georgia team that had lost seven straight games before the NCAA tournament. And, you know, it, we talked about it, Courtney, sometimes that postseason starts and it's just a new slate. You get a fresh start. You come out and you can be a different team. You can erase the mistakes. You can erase the stretch of losses. And you can find yourself playing <laughs> for an opportunity to go to Oklahoma City. Sykes leaps in the air, one away. Look, Georgia's pulling out all the stops, too. No matter what, sometimes it means you got to wear the same shirt multiple days. Sometimes you got to wear it multiple years. That on the right is Ray Supley. You can't miss the shirt. He is Shelby Supley's father. He is a member of the Georgia baseball team back in 1990 when they won the national championship. He has worn that shirt. Every game of this regional, he wore it in 2018 when Georgia beat Tennessee in the Super Regional to go to the World Series. Hey, softball parents, softball fans, very superstitious bunch. <laughs> Not surprising in any way that these parents and supporters are wearing the same clothes. We are told it has not been washed. We will confirm that. <laughs> Bailey Goddard through the 5-6 hole. And she has a hit. It's such an important for the Gators to try and get that bottom of the lineup to spark something. And that's a great example. It's a simple ball in the 5-6 hole that squeaks through and allows something positive for the Gators to try and give them some kind of momentum. Because every single time Florida has done something good or have some kind of production offensively, Georgia takes it right back with a big home run. Jordan Matthews will step up, and obviously she knows what it's like to crush a ginormous hit in this tournament. Back in 2018, as a freshman, had a walk-off three-run homer against Texas A&M to send Florida to the Women's College World Series. That was game three of that Super Regional. This is one of those moments that you don't forget as a softball fan. Just the way it was written, the way she worked into the lineup to be able to come up with a big time opportunity. She had a great at bat. I think she had an 0-2 count and oh. hit the ball out of the park. Wow. A Vance ahead on her 0-2. Back to Mary Wilson. And they'll get the lead runner. We'll have two more NBA playoff game threes for you tonight on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. And, of course, the app, Joel Embiid and the Sixers take on the Wizards at 7 Eastern. Then Ja Morant and the Grizzlies host Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz. Countdown crew starts our coverage at 6 Eastern. Tons of softball, too, all day. We will have Alabama and Kentucky game two for you right here on ESPN when we're done with this one in Gainesville. Got a pinch runner coming in. Emily Wilkie, who started in the DP role yesterday, will pinch run at first base. This is Jamie Hoover. Hoover singled to the gap in left center in the second inning. Her first time facing Avant today.
No doubt Florida's seeing it a lot better. They already have three hits. That was their total number of hits yesterday, and only two strikeouts compared to nine in that first game. And the adjustments are uh, without a doubt expected, especially after you saw Avant yesterday. But I think one of the biggest keys and it favors Georgia is in yesterday's ball game, they only got through the lineup three times, Florida did. So that means they were limited. They only made Mary Wilson Avant throw 100 pitches. So again, they just didn't make her work as much or see as many pitches as they could have seen. But again, they're familiar with her. Count runs full to Jamie Hoover. Runner on first, two outs. <laughs> oh, Avant's going to get the call for her third strikeout. We will talk to Florida head coach Tim Walton when we come back. And we're joined now by Florida head coach Tim Walton. And coach, after yesterday, what was your message to this team and how have you seen them respond? Yeah, I thought, think the bats have been, you know, good on our part. The swings have gotten better today. You know, unfortunately, their swings got better today too. So I think the, the main message was really just, you know, it's a, it's a series. You know, we, we lost one game. We've lost the first game of a series before. And you got to do a good job of trying to, you know, work together, not try to do something by yourself. When anytime you start to get caught up in emotions, um, inside, it just you know, it, it can kind of wreck you a little bit. So we just have to do a good job being a being a better team as opposed to trying to be just uh, be a bunch of individuals. Which we're not an individual team. Just when you get to, to an elimination day, things start to creep in your head a little bit. Coach, a big key to finding success and getting your way back into this series is Katie Cronister coming in relief, and she's been in this role. What makes her successful coming in out of the bullpen as a reliever? When she's going well, she's going to induce a lot of ground balls. So we got to keep the ball in the dirt, obviously. Uh, and, and play good defense behind her. But I think just pounding the zone, changing uh, changing levels, but uh, keeping the ball in the dirt, I think is the most important key for us right now. Awesome, Coach. Thank you. Okay, thank you, guys. Yeah, Chronister has thrived in this role. She has really upped her game this year, too. Her highest total number of innings pitched was just 19 as a freshman. Until this season, she's pitched over 70 innings now. Yeah, she's getting more experience and getting some confidence, but I also think more importantly, she's figuring out who she is, her development of a pitch that has downward movement, but also that has some bite east to west at the end to really elevate that downward movement. I shouldn't say elevate. To make that <laughs> downward spin better has been the key. And I think when you play in college softball, and especially coming from high, high school, you come in with this mentality that I gotta strike everybody out. But really, with this Gator pitching staff, they've recognized they're not gonna be a huge strikeout number of pitchers. They're gonna be more trust their defense and do some simple ground balls. And there's one of them to Eccles, who cleans it up nicely. And the beauty of it is, and we haven't gotten to talk about them a lot today, but the Florida Gator defense is one of the best defenses in the country. Year after year, Coach Walton gets them ready to be solid defensively. Now, top six in the nation in fielding percentage. 27 errors on the season. They've turned 28 double plays. Two of those were yesterday. And once again, we just haven't seen much action defensively yet, but Hannah Adams is one of the best infielders in the entire country playing second base for the Gators. She is studly, and you gotta love the opportunity to watch somebody like her go out and play. And she had some amazing highlight reel plays to help her roommate, Elizabeth Hightower, keep that no hitter on Sunday. Hayden Bordeaux, there's Hannah Adams. Look what she can do, and that's an easy play for her. This is Hannah Adams. Her range is so strong. She shifted up the middle, but she goes on the other side of second base to make this play, pivots, makes the curl, throw across the infield, and she makes it look easy. And her ability to pop off that back right foot to get her plant, to get her balance and throw, 
over to first base is what makes her successful and why she's able to make some of the web gems that we've seen this year. It's really great body awareness, really great control of her athleticism at second base. Yeah, and what's helped her with that, remember, Sofia Reynoso was playing shortstop last year, and they thought Hannah Adams would be, but she got that extra year back, so Reynoso came back. And she made those tough plays, helped Hannah Adams get out of her shell where she has the confidence to go out there and look like that. No scores for Georgia in this inning, but they're still up by three. Georgia's feeling pretty good. A win for the Georgia Bulldogs, and they are moving on to their fifth Women's College World Series. Florida has got to win this game to force a game three. Winner gets either Texas or Oklahoma State. You can see game two of that series coming up later today at 4 Eastern here on ESPN. A rivalry series. These two teams have a history in the postseason. Mary Wilson Avant and her Georgia Bulldogs have come out ready to rock and roll in Gainesville. They won yesterday 4-0. Florida has struggled to hit her today. Well, to score, they've hit her a little bit better. And as this game continues, you keep looking and it's it's top of five. At some point, there has to be something that George, excuse me, Florida has to do to make some kind of adjustment at Mary Wilson Avant. And that's easier said than done, obviously, because of the variety of pitches that she throws. But somebody just got to have a gritty at bat, a long at bat, foul it off, make something happen. And the way I look at it right now is a great opportunity. You have Sarah Longley in the eighth spot, Cheyenne Lindsay, who got a hit off of her yesterday, and had a good hit, to be honest, in her first at bat, just went right to somebody in left field before you turn that top of the lineup over. But that right there, a strikeout looking is what kills you if you're Florida. That's a momentum killer. That does nothing for you right here. Avant just burning it in on the inside corner. This is a pitch that you should foul off. You should be ready for to shorten up with two strikes. And Longley just doesn't get the job done. A three pitch at bat. Her fourth strikeout today. All of them have been looking. Number nine hitter Cheyenne Lindsay. Avant has not thrown more than 18 pitches in any inning. So efficient. <gasps> Lindsay is Florida's best hitter in the tournament, six for 13. That's hitting over 460 coming into this game on a four game hit streak, trying to extend it. See right here the defense, huge shift on Cheyenne Lindsay, and it works out for him. Laser to Fincher, two down. Top of the order, Hannah Adams has not reached and struck out looking in the third the last time she was up against Avant. moments that you start to look at the math of this ball game left. This could be the last at bat for Hannah Adams on the season. And there's no time better than for now for her to come up with her first hit in this Super Regional. Adams a first team all SEC and all defensive team selection this year for Florida. The 
Eagles back up behind off the netting over the fans behind home plate. So it'll be a 2-2 count to Hannah Adams. Jaden Fields, just a 12-pitch inning. Georgia, a win away, and they're moving on to Oklahoma City. World Series, they're up three to nothing, and they've been keying on a certain pitch in this game to score runs. Yeah, when you're Georgia, you know coming into the game that Elizabeth Hightower is going to go with that screwball. So what do you do? You sit on it, and you're ready for it. This one, a little bit over the white. The next one from Fincher finds a way to get her body inside this, get it down the line to pick up an RBI. And then the field's home run, opening up that front side, letting her hips open up so she can get to that pitch that's moving in on her hands and this is the key for Georgia once again how do you prepare the night before how do you make sure that when you get up to the plate that you know what the opposing pitchers throwing and you're ready for it and you execute on your plan and that's exactly what they've done today now that Chronister's in they're gonna have to completely rearrange their thinking sit on a different pitch they're gonna see it coming from the opposite side they're gonna see it have a completely different kind of movement so they're gonna have to make some big time adjustments here late in the game. Gators took care of the side in order in the fourth inning, first full inning that Chronister has pitched. She relieved Hightower in the third, started out with a strikeout of Sydney Chambly. We're at the top of the order here, Savannah Sykes. What I look at for Georgia to make that adjustment is when you face Elizabeth Hightower, for the most part, her movement, with the exception of her changeup, is going to be east and west, and then it'll go vertical. It'll go up in the zone. Chronister is completely different. Chronister stays pretty flat, and then when her ball does have movement, it's going to have more consistent movement down in the zone, which is why she induced three easy ground balls last inning to go three up, three down in her first full inning appearance. Savannah Sykes has been a tough out today. She has walked twice already. Both of those were against Hightower. the seventh pitch to Sykes. so patient. She had a lot of success in the regular season series against Florida. Two went four for eight with two doubles, a home run, a couple runs scored. And she walks for the third time. Well, the Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. Action begins Thursday, June 3rd at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information about the 2021 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Georgia trying to make its fifth appearance in Oklahoma City. Florida's got to win today. They got to win tomorrow to make their 11th appearance to the World Series. Just boom! Sydney Kuma crushed it! That ball had no chance.
chance. Sydney Kuma, I mean, boom. This ball is absolutely crushed. Like you said, Corny, no doubter, beautiful swing, perfect timing. She gets all of this ball. She puts all of her body into it and leaves absolutely no doubt. Gets a little courtesy do jog from Cheyenne Lindsay out in center because she hits this one into the palm trees way beyond center field. And two runs come across because of the patience of Savannah Sykes to truly right. That's a huge at bat from Savannah Sykes with the walk, a quality at bat, gets to 3-2 count, works her way on base for the third time today, and then Sydney Kuma steps up. She's got the Savage Chain. Fincher rolls that one to Chronister. Savage Chain has gotten some action. 11 home runs in the tournament for Georgia. They've got 83 on the season. That's 11th in the nation. And it's multiple people. It's not just one person. Yeah, it's pick your poison for Georgia. It's not just one person stepping up. And honestly, you look at the Gators on the other side, and that's been their Achilles heel in this regional, super regional weekend, is that Adams and Eccles, who have been two of the key players, haven't done enough in their lineup to get them any run production. Kendall Lindemann, on the other hand, has. She's gotten three hits already this this weekend, but it's not enough just for one person to step up. It has to be the entire lineup. Adams and Eccles have no hits this weekend. And once again, this starts because in game one, the bottom of the lineup, the seven, eight, nine hitters for Georgia set the tone. You can't sleep on anybody in the Gators lineup. And Georgia has been able to sleep on some of the Georgia, or excuse me, the Florida hitters because they haven't done anything. Sarah Mosley pokes it through out to left. They've got a read on Chronister right now. We talked about the adjustments. It's getting your barrel at a different angle. You know she's going to bust down and in movement to righty. So what do you have to do? You have to make sure that your barrel stays a little bit deeper in the zone, a little bit more inside. Mosley does that. <laughs> and Sydney Kuma absolutely did that. Her bridge was a little meatier, though. I feel bad for that softball she hit because it is going to be feeling that one tomorrow. I mean, it Ooh. was a perfect swing on a big time mistake from Chronister. Jada Kearney is up right now. She has a home run in this game. It was a solo shot in the third, but now she's got Sarah Mosley on. I mean, this swing was a thing of beauty. And really, it was one of the prettiest swings that we've seen this weekend until Sydney Kuma comes up and tops it in her last at bat. You know, but hearing from associate head coach Baldwin, Jada Kearney, he said, is one of their most talented hitters fundamentally and mechanically. Her swing is really, really strong. What's been progressing throughout this season is her mental approach, is making that sure she stays more confident, that she doesn't beat herself at the plate. They love her progress, and that's got to be a big confidence boost to have a hit like that in a pressure situation. Georgia just has to win today, and they advance to the World Series. Count runs full. Kearney committed, committed to Georgia as an eighth grader, never wavered from that decision. She has been all in with the Georgia Bulldogs. A true freshman for her. Patience, she walks. So much softball on today. Let's go back to the studio with Chris.
ladies, thank you. Kayla, your thoughts? Chronister in the circle? Or excuse me, uh, Killfoil <laughs> in the circle? Wrong game. You know, I think Killfoil pitched so well in the regional that she's getting an opportunity, and she's got some really good stuff. She's been battling some health issues this season. So I think if you look at a healthy Killfoil coming off of an incredible weekend in regionals, she's going to have an opportunity against a tough Kentucky lineup. And let's be honest, this is a Kentucky team that's seen a lot of Montana Fouts. They've seen a little bit less of Lexi Killfoil. So it's just an opportunity to try and mix things up and, again, change it up to challenge the Kentucky hitters in a different way because that's one of the best offenses in the country, too. I was going to say, you can't count out Kentucky. Remember what they did to Notre Dame. The Irish run-rolled them in the regional, and Kentucky came back and won two on Sunday to advance. Sydney Chambly has two on, a single by Sarah Mosley and a walk by Jada Kearney. Just one out. Yeah, with two on and Chambly at the plate, if she sends it out of the park, this game's over. <laughs> yeah, we can see uh, another epic Georgia walk-off here in Gainesville. And with the way that Georgia's been swinging the bat, it's absolutely in the realm of possibility. It's something that you have to think of and be ready for because coming up after Sydney Chambly, guess who's on deck? It's Jaden Fields who already has one today. Jaden Fields has two solo home runs in this series with Florida. We will see her next. Just one out, Chambly at the plate. And it goes off the foot. One run is going to score for Georgia. A six-run lead for the Georgia Bulldogs. Closer and closer they creep to OKC. Sydney Chambly is helping the Georgia Bulldogs stun Florida right here. This is a great at bat. She works it deep into the count and gets an opposite field pitch and drives it into the gap. And then the, there's a mistake. You know, we don't see Florida mistakes very often. Out in center field, Cheyenne Lin Lindsay misses the ball and that allows for two runners now to push into scoring position. So now you have the winning run to get a walk off run rule in Gainesville on second base with Jaden Fields at bat. The hottest hitter for Georgia right now, and it looks like they're gonna walk her. <laughs> this is a smart move. It's a smart move, but then you gotta think about this game, and Peyton Bordeaux is on deck, and she had a home run in yesterday's game. There's just one through nine. This Georgia team is really tough, and you gotta give credit because they have come to play today. I think we thought we would see a different Florida team, and really we haven't, and that's because Georgia came out and they scored in the first inning, and then they scored in the second, they scored in the third, and now they've scored again in the fifth. Jaden Fields has more hits in this series than Florida as a team has today. <laughs> Two of those home runs. So she loads the bases for Peyton Bordeaux, the freshman catcher. Cinnaball over the fence yesterday. It was just her fourth home run on the season. A three-run shot to give Georgia a little extra padding. But again, the winning run at second base right now for Lou Harris Champers crew.
Chronister with the strikeout. Number nine hitter steps in next, Ellie Armistead to face Katie Chronister. Bases loaded. Armistead one for two yesterday with a walk, does not have a hit today. A diving Eccles and is able to tag the bag with her foot to get the force out at third. Georgia came to play at the plate. Sydney Kuma hits a monster bomb to give the Georgia Bulldogs a six to nothing lead. Watching the NCAA Softball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. What an afternoon it's been, game two of this series. Mary Wilson Avant in the circle. Let's take a look at today's player of the game. Excuse me, Capital One's rewarding performance, and it goes to Avant. Oh, it's got to be Mary Wilson Avant. She has not given up a run this entire weekend. She's doing a beautiful job of mixing speeds, mixing pitches, mixing locations. She has been on point. Florida has not had an answer for her this entire weekend. So she earns our Capital One rewarding performance. Back-to-back -back starts for her. Her team up 6-0. The bat's helping her out. A little pad there. And she starts with Kendall Lindemann here in the sixth. That is mutual respect right there. That is the offense understanding that your ace is going out two days in a row facing a number four Florida Gators on the road for a trip to Oklahoma City. And she's doing her job, so the offense says, we're gonna do our job, and comes up with six runs in game two. Sykes makes the play at third. Georgia on the cusp of history. Not only would it be their fifth appearance in the Women's College World Series, but remember, they're an unseeded team. They had to get past Duke last weekend, who was the seeded team. They took them down. If Georgia advances, they would be one of a few. Just only seven teams who were unseeded have made it to Oklahoma City. And you look at Georgia's path, and you can sit there and say, okay, you get a big advantage when you're a host team. You get to play at home against the seeded team, Duke. But to be an unseeded team and have the potential to put your name on this list right here by playing in the swamp and to go out and dominate your opponent for almost two games right here is really impressive. And Nine, it's tough to do, obviously. Yeah, 94% <laughs> of the teams to go to OKC, OKC have been nationally seeded. The last time you saw on that last graphic was 2012 when USF and LSU both made it as unseeded teams in the same year. And such a big piece of Georgia getting there was the last two batters. And we didn't even get to talk about them because we're so focused on <laughs> how big of a deal this is. But a big deal. You just got out Kendall Lindemann and Charlotte Eccles. Those are your two toughest outs of the entire weekend. And you made it look easy if you're Mary Wilson Avant. You can't say enough about her performance today, the grittiness, the gutsiness. And she doesn't just pitch well. She has gone out and dominated this team. It's been her show, and Florida's just coming into the box, saying hello, and then <laughs> going back to the dugout pretty quickly. Avant, nine strikeouts yesterday. Gave up three hits. She's given up three hits today. Four strikeouts. All of those today, though, have been looking. <laughs> yeah, they, she has this Gator team perplexed. They don't have a plan. She's been mixing up her pitches, mixing up her location so well that they haven't been able to sit on one thing today. And that's the advantage. We saw how important it was for Georgia to sit on the screwball from Hightower to really crush that inside pitch. 
Mary Wilson even didn't give Florida the opportunity to do the same thing. Patrol connects for the first time in this Super Regional. She has a hit, sends it right up the middle. Showing a little life here for the Gators. It's got to be one hit at a time. They have a, a large hill to climb. But just getting one hit and chipping away is only going to help. Two outs runner on for Bailey Goddard, who does have a hit against Mary Wilson Avan. That was in the fourth inning. Florida has gotten on in this Super Regional. They haven't been able to help them out. 0 for 13 with runners on. Wow, that's an impressive note, too. Haven't been shut out in back-to-back -back games since 2012. Haven't lost back-to-back -back games this season. Three balls to Bailey Goddard. Florida knows what it's like to go to OKC. They've won a couple of national titles. They have been to the Women's College World Series the last three tournaments, and that's in danger right now. First strike comes into Goddard. Cottrell got on with her first hit of the Super Regional. She's at first for Goddard with two outs. Free pass to Bailey Goddard. So Emily Wilkie steps in. She came in as a pinch runner and now will bat in Jordan Matthews' spot. <laughs> Wilkie, a freshman out of Georgia. She's from Cumming, Georgia. Facing her home state school 0 for 3 yesterday. Her first look today at Avant. Coach Walton is going to take the opportunity to talk to the freshmen, give her some help in terms of what Evans throwing, what the approach should be here. Trying to get some help with runners in scoring position and trying to make something happen for Florida as they're on their last four outs of this ball game. And meanwhile, Mary Wills and Avan, we talk about how successful she's been. That was her first walk of the game that she just gave up. So not only does she have good movement, but she really hasn't given up any free passes, which is so important, especially after giving up a hit by pitch in the first inning. She comes back, she's played really clean softball in the circle. Yeah, only walked two yesterday. Back-to-back -back strikes to Wilkie.
It's in foul territory. Georgia's hustling, and they make the play. Chambly gets there. Georgia can feel it so close to the World Series. by Capital One. What's in your wallet? A Softball Super Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Georgia knows what it feels like to get to the Women's College World Series. They last did it in 2018 when they took down Tennessee in the Super Regionals. Feeling good here on the road in Gainesville. They won game one for nothing. They are up six to nothing right now in the bottom of the six against the four seed in this tournament. It would be the first time Georgia has made it there as an unseeded team. And Georgia's been in the driver's seat this entire weekend. It's been really impressive to see the mentality, the energy that they've brought. And Coach Blue Harris Champer understands that she had a young team and the goal was to get them to be playing their best softball here at the end. And here they are, they have an opportunity to walk this thing off if they score two runs in this inning and officially punch their ticket. I mean, <laughs> they're the home team today. They don't even have to go to the bottom half of this inning. Or excuse me, the top half of the seventh, I should say. Yeah, two wins would run it, win it via the run roll. And a new pitcher for the third time, Riley Trilicek, comes in the circle. Saw her yesterday a little bit. Facing the top of the order, Savannah Sykes. Sykes has been so patient today. Three walks. She's done a really nice, nice job of Understanding her role as a leadoff hitter, she didn't get on base in yesterday's game. She did get on base today with some free passes, working the count, working the strike zone, making sure she fouls off pitches that are close. She's making it really tough on these Florida pitchers. Two, two. Sykes has herself a full count again. Just foul. <laughs> no surprise that we're seeing just another great at bat from Savannah Sykes. And that's so important as the leadoff hitter is you set the tone in so many different ways. And she set the tone in the very first inning of this ball game by finding her way to get on base. And it was a hit by pitch, but it was still a good at bat. She was really tight on the chalk, made Hightower throw it really tight and in on the hands, finds her way on to pick up the first run of this ball game. Walks again. Other games starting to get underway. Let's go back to the studio with Chris and Jen. Ladies, thank you. Big situation here. The winning run is at the plate, and Sydney Kuma, I don't know how you can say it, destroyed a softball in the fifth inning. Yeah, she mashed it. I mean, we can see the field, and she hit it in the palm trees deep behind center field. This was a scary swing. <laughs> you just saw this ball jump off the bat. You can hear it. You can feel it in the stadium. And you can see right there, off of the deep palm tree, way up. It was still moving. I felt that one in my chest. Yeah, yeah. Past, <laughs> past 220 in dead center field. What did that tree ever do to her? Gosh, <laughs> putting a hurting on the tree. 
<laughs> this is such a typical Georgia team over the years. Just that crazy, scary pop. Coach Lou Harris Champer loves to recruit some hitters that are aggressive at the plate and have some jumpy movement. Remember, a win for Georgia, they move on to the Women's College World Series. They'll face either Texas or Oklahoma State. That game two will start later at four here on ESPN. And if Oklahoma State is able to pull off a victory against Texas today, and Georgia's score holds here. Think about that matchup, opening round of the Women's College World Series. Those teams are a lot alike. I mean, they have some electric hitters in their lineups. Yeah, Oklahoma State had four home runs yesterday. Not to mention that there's a couple of cowgirls that are former former Bulldogs on that lineup. Ooh, that's very true. Things can get a little spicy. And Kuma strikes out. Lacey Fincher now representing the winning run at the plate. Savannah Sykes started the inning with a walk. Fincher had an RBI single in the first inning. She is their home run leader with 15 on the year. the glove of Goddard in right field. Two in scoring position. Lacey Fincher, a big hit for the Bulldogs. She is now the winning run at second for Miss Clutch, if you will, Sarah Mosley. You have loved hearing from Mosley's teammates. They have so much confidence and so much faith in her at the plate, her ability to step up in big moments. We've seen her win ball games. We've seen her come up with the big time hit when they need it most, whether it's facing Kentucky this season, Oklahoma. She's come up with some big time momentum. And they're not even gonna give her a chance to hit because she's dangerous. But this whole lineup is dangerous. We talk about there's no superstar on this team. There's nobody that's going to beat you single-handedly. And so once again, who's looming on deck? Somebody that's already hit a home run, Jada Kearney. And this situation is all about Florida trying to play in the hands of their quality defense. They're trying to figure out a way to turn a play and get out of this inning and give themselves an opportunity. And they'll take that risk because the runner on first doesn't really matter at this point. It's all about the runner on second base that will put a nail in the coffin of this game. Jada Kearney back in the third. Need we remind you? Yeah, got a mistake by Elizabeth Hightower and just torched this one out of the park. The team's loving it. They're waving the rally towel. They're fired up. That was her sixth home run of the season. We will have a pitching change now for Florida as they go to Natalie Lugo, who's got the start yesterday in game one of the series. If this is just things that you didn't think were going to happen today. I didn't think that we were going to see four different pitchers from Florida today. And that's such a credit to the preparation and the readiness of this Georgia Bulldog offense. Remember, so much on the line. Florida playing for its season. Georgia a win, and they move on to OKC. It would be the fifth appearance in the Women's College World Series for the Georgia Bulldogs. That winning run is on second right now. That would invoke the run rule. Georgia, one of several teams that has the chance to punch their ticket to Oklahoma City. Of course, Florida State did it last night. 
the big day. I, I love seeing that the teams that can advance today. It's such an important thing to be able to punch your ticket to go to Oklahoma City, whether it's for the first time or whether it's going back. It's what you live for as a softball player. It's the biggest stage. You have an opportunity to compete for a national championship. It just doesn't get any better than that. Big moment here. Let's check in with the studio real quick. Chris, thank you. Alabama has the chance to punch its ticket if they can beat Kentucky today. They did it last night. So a pinch runner comes in. CJ Landrum has a lot of speed. She is out at second base right now. She is the winning run. Kearney at the plate. Jada Kearney did not get a hit off of Natalie Lugo yesterday. Much more success today, a home run and a walk. Jada Kearney, just a freshman. This is a huge head bat in her career. Absolutely. You just hear time and time again, this Georgia team is so young. They've never been here, but you know, you can't help but credit them for the growth this season. And just helping out Mary Wilson Avant with the offensive support this weekend has been so key to their success. Georgia has put it all together, the pitching, the hitting, the defense has all been there. They have been building up all season for this moment, and it's paying off. Lugo gets her. You know when Natalie Lugo's in, she's gonna go to this off speed. Her change up, so effective, gets Kearney out in front, definitely off balance. It's a great job with the bases loaded to come in and take care of business on the first batter you face with a big changeup. Sydney Chambly up next. She had the walk-off grand slam in the regional against Western Kentucky. Into the glove of Buffano in right. Last chance for the Gators, season on the line. at Florida in Super Regionals. Back to 2016, bottom of the seventh, two outs. Kaylee Puailoa, a pinch hit home run. Moose got the juice and Georgia advanced to the Women's College World Series. One of those epic moments. This was Florida, the number one seed coming off of back-to-back -back national championships. And Georgia goes into Gainesville and walks it off. And you know, Obviously, Florida's not the back-to-back -back championship this year, but for Florida to look like they did this weekend and for Georgia to come out and dominate has been so impressive. And that shows in the postseason, Georgia has beat Florida four out of five times. Just impressive. And Mary Wilson Avan has been a big part of that. Got the start yesterday. Still in there after getting the start in back-to-back -back days. No runs on the weekend. Only three walks, has 13 Ks. Her defense has backed her up. 
this is why you play in these big moments is for players and individuals to step up. Avent has done just that through the first 13 innings of the Super Regional. It'll be 7-8-9 for Florida with the season on the line. Slow roller to Armistead at short, one away. Back to the studio with Chris. Wow, keep an eye on that one. We'll get you to that game as soon as we're done here in Gainesville. Remember, a win for Alabama, and they advance. Pinch hitter for Florida. Kinsley Gells. First time we've seen her against Georgia in this series. And hits her in the knee. Second hit batter today. And they'll re-enter Sarah Longley to run in her place at first with Cheyenne Lindsay, the number nine hitter coming up looking for her first hit of the afternoon. And that was the best that Florida could hope for in that situation, just to try and get a free pass that really Avent hasn't given up much of this entire weekend. And what it does is it sets it up for the opportunity for the top of the lineup to come back up and make some magic happen. First pitch strike to Lindsay. Florida in this series, 0 for 14 with runners on. Kuma at second. No chance to turn two, but they do get the second out. Last out now, it'll be the top of the order for Florida. What an opportunity for Hannah Adams. This is one of those moments for Hannah Adams that she's not going to be able to come back in this ball game with one swing, or but she can help chip away. She can have a quality at bat to kind of to give kind of uh, to give some kind of momentum to this Gator offense. And she's a leader for this team, and you don't want anybody else up. She's been clutch all season long. She's one of the best hitters in this lineup. And if anybody's going to get the job done, it's going to be Hannah Adams. Otherwise, their season is going to be over. OKC, the Bulldogs are coming for you. Unseated, unfazed, Georgia is moving on to its fifth Women's College World Series. What an incredible performance from the Georgia Bulldogs this weekend. They dominated the Gators for two straight games. Mary Wilson Avant put the team on her back and said, I'm taking us to Oklahoma City to get a chance to compete for a national championship. She gave up no runs on the weekend, and the offense came to support her. One through nine, everybody in this lineup stepped up. Everybody came through. They got the big time performances that they needed. They're playing their best softball right now, and it showed against the Gators this weekend. Georgia lost seven straight before this tournament, flushed it. They have won every game so far in the NCAA tournament. They upset the number four seed. Florida is done, and they do it on their home field here in Gainesville.
This is why you play the game. It's for moments like this. It's for the underdogs. It's for the upsets. You never know until you get there. And it was about who would show up and play the best softball right now on the field today. Georgia did that in back-to-back -back days. History made for the Georgia Bulldogs. This is the second time in a Super Regional they have taken down Florida. They are going back to Oklahoma City, our second team who has punched its ticket to the biggest dance on the softball field. Yeah, they love that. They have the ticket in hand. They're ready to go. They're fired up. And they are deserving of this trip. To be able to come to a hostile environment in Gainesville, to win on the road, to win against one of the toughest teams, one of the most consistent teams in the country is a really big deal. They're young, they're fiery, and they're going to have an opportunity to make some waves when they play with the final eight teams. What a feeling for Mary Wilson Avant starting back-to-back -back games, her defense backing her up to get this Georgia program to its fifth World Series. And nobody wants to face Georgia right now. They're dangerous. They're dangerous. They're hot. <laughs> they are a tough team to beat offensively. And it's going to be a good show to have them down in OKC. Georgia is in. They join Florida State as the first two teams in OKC. They'll get the winner of Texas and Oklahoma State. Season continues for the Georgia Bulldogs. Victorious over Florida today.